Hello and welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company and Elon Musk. It's been another busy week in the life of The Boring Company. We've heard some major updates in regards to the test tunnel at Hawthorne. We've got some pictures of uh, the TBM that's been manufactured at the SpaceX campus. Overall, pretty good week. So I thought we'd start off with the news before we get down to this episode. As always, good source of news is Teslarati. They have their own Boeing Company section, which is very, very good sort of uh, thinking ahead, progressive move by Teslarati to have that already set up, ready for why, when everyone's talking about the Boeing Company, and hopefully following my channel. <laughs> so what's this article about? It's about the Boeing company, the TBM that they're building at the moment, uh, the actual gantry for that, and also some information in regards to the Chicago project. So we have our pictures of this gantry that's been manufactured at the SpaceX campus. There's not really a, a great lot to see here. It's basically just the uh, steel frame. Um, and then it mentions the Chicago project. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the background in regards to the Chicago project. Excuse me, only the people who actually work at the Boeing Company or work for the local government in Chicago know, know all the finer details in regards to this project. However, we all know that it's progressing nicely and that they are hopefully going to be starting next year, hopefully early in the year. These are pictures of Lionstorm, the TBM, and I'll be showing you them in a minute. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about TBMs, tunnels and elevators. First of all, a bit of a shout out to some followers of the channel. They are Trey Trusty and Charlie Doyle. Thank you for shouting me out with the address for this site. I know someone else did also shout me out. However, I, I couldn't find that comment, so I, I apologise in advance for not having your name here. But uh, Trey and Charlie were the first two people to shout me out and, and tell me what the address is, uh, which is excellent. I also got a PDF, I believe, from Trey, which is from the Hawthorne Local Governance, and I'm going to be reading that in the near future because it has some very interesting information in it. As you can see... Um, we have the house now. So originally, before I knew the address, I went on Google Maps. I had a good look around, um, sort of around 120th Street and in the streets surrounding where they're building the shaft. And I couldn't find anything. But thanks to this address, I've been able to find the house. It's just a standard house. Uh, it looks pretty um, rough around the edges, really. It looks quite decrepit, to be honest with you. Uh, there's barely any grass at all. But it's a nice big plot. As you can see from this picture, it is a single level dwelling, as we like to call them in the UK, a bungalow. Uh, it has a lot of land at the back. That is where I believe they're going to build the actual elevator shaft. They will demolish the garage that you see in this picture. This garage here, that will be demolished. Uh, they will build something new at the rear of the property that will sort of match the existing buildings in the area. Although a lot of these houses look pretty old and decrepit, especially this one next door. Um, so anything they do is going to be an improvement on what's already there because everything looks pretty awful. It is a full-on residential street. There are no businesses there. It is just purely uh, single level dwellings. Um, it's going to be interesting. This is where they're going to be building loop elevators in these kinds of areas, mainly in the suburbs, but obviously in places like Hawthorne where they have these, these areas of residential uh, properties. Um, hopefully when they build this, they take into consideration all the neighbors and all the people that are living in the surrounding area and, and ensure that they conduct the work in in a way that is as least disruptive as possible. They need to keep noise levels down. They need to work during predefined hours, i.e. 
in between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. They mustn't over uh, go over those time limits. Uh, I would recommend that they store all the spoil that they excavate on site and then remove it in large bulk loads rather than having lots and lots of uh, skips turn up on the back of trucks and it's constant traffic 10 hours a day. That would not work very well for the local neighbours. I think they should use as large a truck as possible and as few journeys as possible. I'm pretty confident they've already thought of this. Um, they need to come up with a plan of how they're going to do this in the future. So starting from now, they need to work out how they can do this quietly, how they can do this on budget, how they can do this quickly, and how they can do this uh, safely without causing disruption to nearby neighbours and property. Right, where is this in relation to everything else that we know about the SpaceX campus and the existing shafts? So, we have our new shaft that is being constructed here, the 40-foot shaft, which is just being finished as we speak. Uh, the TBM is currently under 120th Street, or at least adjacent to it. I'm not 100, I think it's under 120th Street. I don't believe it is on uh, the airfield. But then again, I could be wrong. I believe reading it was one, one, under 120th Street. I'm pretty confident on that. If that is incorrect, please write it in the comments below, guys. But I'm pretty confident it's under 120th Street. This is the site of the uh, address in question, that uh, property. As you can see, it is around 100 to 150 foot from the existing tunnel. There are many existing residential dwellings along this row. Therefore, again, and I stress this again, they need to make sure they are a good neighbour, a considerate neighbour. So let's look at our tunnel. So as you can see, here's our shaft that's being built. Uh, it's due to be connected up to the main tunnel. Um, I presume it will curve across rather than having this 90 degree angle. Here's the original shaft that was built over here near the entrance to SpaceX on what was formerly a car park. And here's our dwelling that's going to be converted into a loop elevator. Now, I've drawn this approximate tunnel path. It may not take that path. It may be more of a 90 degree exit. That will, That is not a good way of doing it. I hope that they do this kind of 45 degree angle because if you imagine you've got various pods inside of this tunnel, when they come up to here, they want to be traveling at, at least 100 miles an hour, or maybe slightly below, 90, maybe 90 miles an hour. If they have to slow down to 20 miles an hour to turn, that's going to slow down all the other pods that are behind. Hence causing some gridlock, which is totally the opposite reason for this system. What they want is a nice long on-ramp, at around 45 degrees. However, that involves going under other homes. Do they have permission to do that? I am unaware of any permissions to do that. However, that is the best way of doing it. Hopefully, that is what we see on this project. It's not gonna cause any disruption to the people they burrow below. They won't even notice the tunnels there. But we'll have to see when I find out more information, you will be the first to find out. Uh, other information that we received from that Teslarati article, uh, the line storm TBM is taking shape. Obviously, we've got Godot. Then we've got uh, Godot is the current TBM that is being used in the tunnel at Hawthorne. The next generation tunnel will be Limestorm, which they are developing at present. And then the one after that will be Proof Rock, which will be the fully automated real deal TBM machine, this super fast one. Um, this is my personal opinion. The TBM is by far the most critical piece of technology for the Boeing company and its mission to end soul destroying traffic. Absolutely critical that the TBM is well built it is a technological marvel, i.e. it can do things that no other TBM has ever done before, and it can do it fast. That's the key. They can produce a TBM that's 200% uh, faster than anything that has ever been used in the USA before. That will be seen as a major, major success, and 
they will be on the news as the company that has achieved something no one ever, no one else has ever achieved. So, what are the Boeing company plans for Linestorm and also for Proof Rock? One, they're going to up the power output of the machine. That means there's more torque at the face of the machine. The cutter head will be rotating faster. Uh, and obviously, thanks to that, it'll be able to bore through the geology much more quickly. Number two, they're going to improve the thermal cooling of the machine. Obviously, all the moving elements and mechanical elements of this machine are going to be producing large amounts of heat because they are being worked very, very hard, like all TBMs. Thus, they need to be thermally cooled in order to achieve peak output. If you then increase the power um, and you don't think about thermal cooling, you're going to have some major problems. So I presume they're going to use uh, SpaceX technology to ensure that every component that is critical to this machine is properly thermally cooled and they don't need to worry about things melting or things breaking. Uh, they're going to fully automate or partially automate segment assembly. So the actual manipulators that move the concrete segments will be fully automated in the near future. For faster muck removal, so they'll use dual tracks so they can get materials in as well as getting uh, muck out at the same time without having to wait for things to come in and out of the tunnel. They're going to use AI and machine learning. So obviously they're going to work with people at Tesla, Tesla and SpaceX who have expertise in this area to ensure that this machine can learn from its mistakes, can improve. There's that constant level of improvement and overall the machine will continue to improve day by day as it bores more tunnels. Mm -hmm. Uh, also be 100% battery powered. The gantry can be almost as long as you want it to be. It could be four or 500 meters if you really, really needed it to be. Therefore, there is plenty of room for very, very large battery packs. Um, therefore, that's what they're gonna do. And then they could probably charge up the battery packs by using some form of train that has battery packs on it. And then it can uh, go to the machine, charge the machine, uh, go to the surface, charge up, then go back to the machine, then charge the machine, and they can just be doing this four times a day, which is perfect because you won't need to put large cables in the tunnel, which is often expensive, expensive and time-consuming. So these are the pictures we see from Tesla Rati. This is the actual gantry. Uh, there's nothing much to see here. It is just essentially a steel frame or skeletal frame, as we like to call it. The actual welding on these joints here looks very professional indeed. Looks pretty damn good. So a good question would be, what is in the gantry? In the gantry is everything that helps run and operate the TBM. So it's mainly your conveyor belt. So at the face, you've got your screw conveyor. Then you have your sort of your main conveyor belt that removes muck from the machines and takes it to the muck uh, carts or muck trains. Then you've got the, the segment conveyor. Um, and then you've obviously got the uh, manipulator or the 360 degree rotating arm that installs the segments. So everything that goes into building and operating uh, the TBM is stored inside this gantry or this large steel frame. Again here, it's a large gantry, it's, a, it's pretty big. You can imagine how, how big these machines are and how heavy they are once they are fully assembled. We are talking hundreds if not thousands of tons, depending on the length and the complexity of the machine. And that doesn't include all the materials that are constantly being moved along, along this machine, which are also very, very heavy. Again, we see the pictures here. As you can see, the legs on the machine are curved uh, and that is so that they can sit on the sides of the tunnel as it is a curved surface. Uh, right guys, well, thank you very much for watching this video. I do appreciate that. Please like and subscribe. Our subscriber numbers are going up at a very, very constant rate, which is excellent. 
hopefully we'll hit that next milestone of 200 subscribers maybe before christmas that would be really awesome that's what we're aiming for we want to do that uh, i've also set up a facebook page which the idea is that i'm gonna have people in there debating about various ideas and concepts in regards to the boring company um I would definitely recommend going and joining that group. I'm going to start posting more content on there soon. I've only recently set it up, but hopefully once we get uh, a few dozen people joining, we can get some momentum going. Uh, but it's going to be a place, a place where we can debate uh, and debate in a nice way. I appreciate that in this day and age, it is difficult. Sometimes people have different ideas and they are quite aggressive about how those ideas should and must happen. But overall... I think it'll work out quite well. So again, guys, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please follow me on Twitter and please also get on the Facebook page if you want to talk about the Boeing Company in more detail or have some particular opinions. Right, well, thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone watching the channel. Uh, things are going very well. The Boeing Company is progressing very, very nicely. I'm having zero problems finding news to talk about every week. So... Hopefully this continues in the next year, in 2019. Okay, guys, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. And don't be boring. See you later.